Uh, so, <clears throat> last week, uh, there was, uh, attacks on the Syrian people, uh, and a few days later, we, America, launched missiles at that base. That was, it was determined um, that they concluded that that's where that all of that came from. So, and there's a lot of people split on that. And I, and this whole thing has been talked about, about, uh, has been talked about by better people than me. Obviously, you know, I'm more into movies, as you all know, who are who frequent this channel. But I don't know. It seems very. This whole thing is interesting, in a way, to me. That I don't know if. You know, we don't really actually know the whole picture. It's been about a week, or actually, it has been a week, but still, I mean. It's going to take uh, some time before we know the whole story. Um, but from what it looks like to me, and also I watched a video by Micah, Micah Curtis, uh, who talks about politics and other things on his channel. And this is like a kind of, you know, it's a political matter. That kind of it is. And people are like, it's the beginning of World War Three. This and that, and... Calm down. From the looks of everything, I believe like what happened is that Trump... Uh, sent a warning of sorts. Now, you could, you'd be asking, like, why is that? You know, why you sent a warning to Syria? They and Russia are very, you know, close, and um, as well as also it could be like to North Korea and other Middle Eastern culture or countries, not cultures. Um, and the reason is, you know, obviously America and those countries don't really get along very well. Well, uh, you know, the whole Syria thing. I've heard certain things about Syria over the years, but not a whole lot myself to but from like news and stuff. But occasionally they'll say something about Syria. But after a while, they kind of just kind of go away with it. Um, and the thing is that again, I believe this is Trump's. Kind of making an example, essentially saying, like, this kind of thing won't be tolerated at all. You know, like they broke UN uh, rules of having chemical weapons in their country to begin with. And I know some say that it was ISIS. Well, the thing is that these. Uh, attacks, the gas attacks that happened last week, you know, April 4th, um, they came from the air. There was, it was an airstrike. And that's how the people got gassed. Now, I don't believe ISIS has, is, or they have, I don't believe they have planes. And if they do, well, this would be a first I had, I have been, I would have heard about it, as well as anybody, unless it has been said before, but, you know, things like that kind of do 
can get bogged down because of other things happening with ISIS in that group. But basically, um, with that, with knowing that knowledge of um, the fact that it is, it was an airstrike in which this chemical uh, weapon came from, or weapons that gassed the innocent people, innocent children, babies. It's very good to, it, like, all things indicate to Assad. Because again, I seriously doubt ISIS has any kind of uh, planes. Usually when you hear about them, it's usually ground attacks. You know, they're, I mean, yeah, this was a ground attack, but usually things like that, it's from the ground. They go from point A to wherever point B is, and then they do what they do, and it's terrible and awful, and, you know, I think we all agree it shouldn't happen. But these things do, unfortunately. Um, but, you know... I feel like the reason these were these missiles were launched at that airbase was because like well because it was an airstrike when intelligence was looking at what happened with all this I guess like all fingers pointed to this place and you know they uh, concluded that, and yeah, that we all know that uh, that place got missiles launched at it, and yeah, um, and people keep saying like it was ISIS because you know Assad is he does great things for his people. Okay. The thing, though, I have to say is, and, point, and will point out, is in 2013, there were uh, other chemical attacks similar to this. And a lot of people that survived that fled. They are refugees in other countries. And in light of this, some of the refugees that are in Canada were on uh, news networks like CNN. There's one notable one on CNN. But I will link in the description below, as well as um, the Micah Curtis video where he explains things better than I can. But basically, the guy said that this kind of stuff has happened before in Syria, and it was Assad who did it, And they are happy Trump has done this because, you know, he likes, Assad needs to be taken out of office and somebody new goes in. But, and you know, <clears throat> and with all this knowledge, you know, I tend to agree, but the thing is, how do we get him out? We don't need to go and put troops in. Because, you know, things have happened like that before, and, you know, and while you could say there are good, there were positives that happened, at the same time there were a lot of negatives, so do we want anything like that to happen again? No. We don't want it where, like, the world is really split on that matter. We do want to figure out a way to get Assad out without putting troops in Syria and have this happen uh, and in 2013 um, Obama said that chemical weapons were in Syria and by 2014 they will be completely gone there's like an agreement there these agreements don't really amount to a whole lot except words 
written on paper that gets signed. Just because you sign a paper and something like that doesn't mean that person will follow through with it. And it seems like Assad has not followed through on his word, and this is the result. Um, you might not like me saying that, and, you know, okay. Fine. Uh, fair enough, I guess. But take it to the account of the refugees that have said Assad has done this before. And they are happy this happened. Now, I hope the UN will do something about this. Because uh, a lot of things have happened over the years that, you know, they should have been involved in it, but they haven't. And it would be a good time for the UN for the first time in quite a while to actually step in and do something about this matter. Do something about Assad. Make sure any incident like this won't happen again. Or, yeah, not again. Uh, because, you know, I don't know, really know what I was going to say because, you know, honestly, in all honesty, I mean, Nobody wants this to happen again. And people say, oh, Trump's a warmonger. Well, he hasn't declared we are going to war with Syria or anybody. And I don't think he will, but, you know, I think a lot of people are just overreacting to this whole situation. We need to take a step back and take a deep breath. Look at the pa look at facts. Look at what has happened in the past. Listen to some of the people, like the refugees, and and somebody actually said, or and that the guy in the CNN video said, he wants to go back to Syria, but he doesn't really want he doesn't want to go back while Assad is in charge. Now, why would s somebody say that when Assad's supposed to be this great guy who helps out his people? Either people are being very naive on the whole situation, or they're being lied to about this guy. Well, I could keep going, but, you know, I've kind of rambled on enough, really. And, uh, well... description will be the Michael Curtis video as well as the CNN uh, video and uh, that's it so bye